What's up YouTube, Mike here with another video and today I wanted to do my review on the Google Pixel Book. Now I did an unboxing of this and first impressions a few days ago and I've actually had quite a bit of time with the device now. So having used Chrome OS for a while now, it's pretty easy for me to come to a conclusion on this. So without further ado, let's get into the review. So the Google Pixel Book has been out for almost a year now. I think it's been about 10 months and we're probably gonna see a refresh in October. But the reason I went ahead and bought it is because one, I thought it was a cool device, something I've been excited about for a while, wanted to get my hands on, but the price was really holding me back to be honest. And it's actually been on sale a few times now, but I'm pretty sure the price that it's at, it's gonna stay at for a while and that's $750. So I'm gonna link my unboxing video up here I kind of talked about the pricing of it. So I was actually able to get a student deal along with the um, $750 price. So really I was out the door with the pen for about 800 bucks. So I went ahead and bought the pen as well, which is a separate purchase, but I'll get into that. So let's start looking at the hardware of this thing. Now the hardware is really kind of where it's at. This thing has got really nice build quality. The whole thing is made out of aluminum. It's got a glass little back strip on the back of it, which I think is to kind of help with the Wi-Fi antennas inside more so than aesthetics. But one of the things I noticed on the actual unboxing was I thought that this thing had a SD card slot, like a micro SD card slot, but it has none. So it really has no SD card slot, but um, with 128 gigabyte storage, it doesn't really matter. But going around this thing again, it's a beautiful design. It's got a 12.3 inch quad HD display. It gets extremely bright, so it's about 400 nits of brightness. So you really are not gonna have any problem using this thing outside just because the screen is actually really bright. It's brighter than the previous model that I'm rocking right now. It is a touch display, which you probably already knew that because this is a two-in-one device. Um, it's got a 720p webcam on it, which I just don't recommend you ever use. I'm not even going to show you any video, it's just for any Chromebook, no matter how good the camera is, the software is still terrible for the camera. So if you have a Chromebook, I really would recommend just not using the cameras to be honest with you. Um, of course this thing has got multiple modes, so you've got the laptop mode, you've got kind of the kickstand display mode where it's a tent mode, and then um, where it, I guess display mode. but multiple modes, so it's just however you want to configure this to set it on a table. So with some of these modes, it'll make it more convenient if you're on an airplane using a tray table. But one of the things on the hardware that I don't like, and it's just a personal thing, you may, I kind of think it's too thin. I mean, it's it's sturdy, but just personal preference holding it in my hand. Maybe I'm used to the 2015 model, and I'll show you a comparison, but I just think it's too thin. It just feels not comfortable in the hand. And again, this is just personal preference. It doesn't flex, it's very rigid, but at the same time, I just personally don't like how thin it is. And also with the two-in-one design, anytime it folds back and you can feel the keyboard on the back, I just personally don't like that. I would prefer a detachable design. All right, so back to the ports. Of course, it's got two USB-C ports on either side of the device and it has a headphone jack. And that's it. So you got no USB type A's, but you do have a headphone jack and you've got two USB-C ports and they're actually USB-C 3.1s. So moving away from the hardware, let's kind of look at the actual specs of this, the internals of this thing. This thing's got an i5, it's the seventh gen i5, so it's at 1.2 gigahertz, but it'll actually boost up to 3.3 gigahertz. It's got eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. So that's where I can kind of get over the not having an SD card slot because if you know anything about a Chromebook or Chrome OS, 128 gigabytes is quite a lot, even with throwing Android apps on there. So kudos to Google for that. Now one of the best features of this is actually the battery. This has got a 41 one hour battery. So Google advertises about 10 hours of battery life on this thing. And they say in 15 minutes, you can get about two hours of battery life. So it does do a quick charge. And I used this, I took it to work with me and I used it the entire day, so for about 12 hours. Um, I started the day at 100%, and I was down to about 10% or less uh, by the time I left. So really, I used it for about 10 hours, and that was doing YouTube, watching YouTube videos, um, surfing the web, and movie watching. And I had the brightness at about probably 60%, so a little bit over 50%, and really, 
with this screen that's actually plenty it's got a really nice display so it's bright easy to see so the 10 hour battery life is actually really accurate now obviously if you crank that screen brightness all the way to max then that battery life is probably going to go down to about six to eight hours so kind of take it for a grain of salt but 10 hours is actually really uh, a really good fair estimate for this device so personally the day i drained it i got about 10 hours all right so now let's talk about the performance of this thing now obviously if you know anything about chrome os i keep saying that but it's a very light os and it really doesn't take a lot to run it i mean that's why you got your 300 dollar chromebooks that have four gigs of ram some with two gigs of ram and it runs chrome os just fine so unsurprisingly this thing is extremely fast especially just running chrome os so it runs android apps very well i'm not going to really show you any but essentially it runs it not quite as good as it would run on an android tablet itself but most of the apps uh, run just fine now some of them will have scaling issues where it won't be full screen so you have black bars on either side which is kind of a bummer but overall if you want to do stuff like asphalt 8 or some of the other light android games it'll run it just fine um, my favorite apps that i personally like to use is the microsoft office suite for mobile they scale up perfectly they run perfectly and no issues whatsoever now with this you can actually do split screen and it's kind of hit or miss now using split screen with um, having google chrome open i found that the only app that really or the only website that scales properly the first time is youtube so if i have a YouTube and then I snap either an Android app or just another web page to the left or right The only one that really scales correctly is YouTube and I'll show you what I mean by that So if you take the iPad Pro and you actually snap two apps together or if you do this on Windows They automatically scale for the smaller screen so you don't have to pan left or right to see the full page so With that it seems to be broken with Chrome OS right now, which is kind of a disappointment. It's kind of a bummer but you can do split screen. You can have an app up there and or a web page, but you just kind of got to play with the scaling a little bit. It's not automatic, which it should be. Now, just like you would expect with an i5 and just the specs of this thing, it'll run an external display just, just fine through the USB-C ports. This will actually push a 4K display at 30 Hertz. Now the display that I've got it hooked to is only 1080p, but as you can see, there's no issues with it whatsoever. I can do multiple stuff, have multiple tabs, and it does not slow down. Honestly, the time that I've had with this Pixelbook, I haven't been able to find any task that will slow it down. So performance really is excellent. Now, as you can hear, the sound on this is great. The speakers, I think, are really loud. I mean, I honestly don't have any problems with the speakers. I'm not an audiophile by any means. Um, as long as I can hear it, I guess I'm content, but it gets really loud, and to me, it sounds good. It doesn't really sound tinny, kind of like a single um, cell phone speaker. So I think the sound is actually really good. I will say that if this was still the original $9.99, that I wouldn't have bought it. I don't think it would have been worth the price. But the build of this is extremely good. It's a Now, you can get an optional pin with this. And it is a bummer that you got to pay extra for it, but it's $99, but it's on sale right now for $82. So if you get it through Amazon, Google, and or Best Buy, you can get it for about 82 bucks. So I went ahead and got the pen and the performance is actually pretty good. Now, the limitation is not necessarily the pixel book, the pen or the hardware. It's still a lot of the apps are just not optimized for the pen. So it's hit or miss. Some apps have no perceivable lag with the pen and some apps unfortunately have quite a bit so i'm personally a big OneNote guy and i can use it with one note it's usable but there is a little bit of lag whereas if i went and use google keep there's no perceivable lab lag with this <clears throat> and if i use uh, squid squid which is a android note taking app there's zero lag so it's really on the developers to optimize their apps for the pen so it's not Google's fault, but it is kind of hit or miss. Now there's quite a few art apps that I tried and the one that had the least lag um, was Sketchbook Pro. So with that, as you can see, there's a little bit of lag. Now obviously if you change the brush size, it would give you more or less lag. But again, it's not necessarily the limitation of the Pixel Book, it's a limitation of the apps not being quite optimized. So, and this does has tilt support. So if you use 
sketchbook, which again, it's app dependent. As you see, I can tilt it and I can use uh, shading and it works just like it would with the Apple Pencil. And personally, I think the Pixelbook pen, the friction on it feels better than it does with an iPad Pro. So um, the Apple Pencil, I like it, it's great, but unless you put a screen protector, it's just too slippery. It's just like writing on glass. I mean, cause that's what you're doing, but you have less control, but they did a good job with the Pixel Pen, um, giving it the right amount of friction. So for artists and note takers, I think you'll actually enjoy it quite a bit. All right, so wrapping up the performance of this thing, it's kind of good and bad. I mean, the performance is excellent, but it's bad in the respect that the OS is not using the full potential of this device. And that's kind of the theme with the Pixel Book is it's essentially a little overkill for Chrome OS at this point because of the limitations of it. It's got awesome hardware, it's got phenomenal specs and performance, but you're not really utilizing that as a Chromebook because even with Android apps, you're just not pushing this thing. So it's kind of overkill. Now I've got the 2015 um, Chromebook Pixel 2 and I couldn't tell any difference whatsoever with the performance of this thing. Now obviously the screen is brighter on the Pixelbook over the previous model and also with the previous model you get the SD card slot which you don't get with the Pixelbook. And obviously there's a 7th gen processor in the Pixelbook and only a 5th gen in the previous model. So it is faster but because of Chrome OS I can't tell the difference. So. Um, so personally, I'm going to stick with the 2015 model and actually return this because it is powerful, more powerful, it is faster, but you don't see that in usage because Chrome OS just doesn't allow you to utilize that horsepower. So it's kind of all for naught. All right, and finally, the price. So this is kind of what most people care about, myself included. And the price of this thing, even at the sale price, is still way too much. So. Again, the regular price of this thing is a thousand bucks, and if you buy that at a thousand bucks, you're kind of crazy. I mean, unless you got the money burning a hole in your pocket, money's no issue. It's just not worth the price. I mean, there's just no value there. Now, from a hardware perspective, I can see the value, but from a software, Chrome OS is still too limited to spend that kind of money. So, as we all know, for that kind of money, we can get a really good Windows laptop. You can even buy a MacBook Air. Now, the sale price again is $750, and I still think that's too much. There's better options out there for $750. So if they do the rumors with Chrome OS where you can actually dual boot Windows, and you can run some Linux apps in the um, developer mode slash uh, beta, but it still doesn't warrant that price tag. So until you can dual boot Windows natively, that's when it will be worth the price in my opinion. But as it stands, the price is the big bummer of this device and the killer. So um, again, I'm returning mine just because for that kind of money, there's just there's just no value. It's a beautiful device. I like it. Um, I love Chrome OS. I'm still going to use Chromebooks. But for that kind of price, I can do almost the same thing on a $300 Chromebook that you would do on this one. It's just not as pretty and it's uh, not as powerful. But again with Chrome OS, you don't really notice the difference. So having all that extra horsepower really doesn't mean much. All right, so to wrap this up, as you've probably picked up from the tone of this video, I like the device. I just don't like the price. There's just no value in it. If you are familiar with uh, Telosa Tech and Drew, he just did a 30 minute rant on the Pixel Book. He reviewed it and I agree with him on most of the points. Um, I think his model actually did have some hardware issues, but the software is what really leaves this device scratching my head. I mean, I'm just kind of like, it's got great specs, great performance, but you can't utilize it with Chrome OS. So until Chrome allows you to do more, um, add more features, then it's kind of overkill. So my recommendation would be pass on this unless you can get it on a really good sale. I'm going to assume as soon as Google has their event in October, they're going to launch a refresh model of this. So this current model will probably go on sale even more. And especially with Black Friday coming up, that's when I would get it. So I think, well, honestly, uh, people might blast me in the comments, but I, I think 500 bucks is the sweet spot for this. So if you're paying anything over $500 for this device, it's honestly not worth it. So there you have it. That's my thoughts on the Pixel Book. It's going to be a pass for me. I'm going to return it and I'm going to stick with my 2015 model that I got for 350 bucks that does 
almost as much as the pixel book but all that i really need so as always i appreciate you watching this um, if you've not subscribed you can go ahead and do so and just make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when new videos are posted as always thanks for watching